Hello everybody, welcome to Ask a Fund Manager. In this video is the second part of our series analyzing option Greeks. Option Greeks are the mathematical functions of the price to drivers of put and call options contracts. In the first part we covered delta, gamma, and theta, which are the change in price, underlying price that changes with the change in stock price, the change in the delta with the change in stock price, and the change in, in the value of the option with time or time decay. In this part two, we're going to go into volatility and a few other, the more obscure Greeks, including a more custom one that I use for my own research process. The first one we're going to talk about, to get straight to the point, is Vega, which is the change in value with the change in volatility. Volatility is calculated as a derivation of um, the Black-Scholes formula, which gives all the, the components of the option of what price is an option. I'm not going to get into the whole details and derive all the Black-Scholes here in this video. I don't think it's of interest to most of the viewers anyway. But the bottom line is, is that since we have all the other variables and we have what it's trading at in the market in terms of price already, we can derive what volatility is in, so in a basic systems of equation that will tell us, well, based on what all the other variables are, the chunk left over is what the implied volatility is. And volatility is basically a measure of standard deviation of price action or anticipated standard deviation. So say for example, if a company that you're long of call, there's a lot of takeover rumors, it's gonna have a lot more um, implied volatility going on because there's the possibility the company gets bought out or that the buyout deal fails and there's some premium priced in and it goes down it's going to have a lot more volatility than say like a giant stock in a boring industry that there's not any corporate action or if the economy is on the rocks you're going to get higher volatility than if it's a smooth sailing economy so VIX is the measurement that a lot of people talk about. That's for vol That's a, a measurement of what volatility is within the S&P 500. But volatility is not the same for every stock because of idiosyncratic events, sector differences, and other systemic risks and um, that make different companies have different implied volatilities with such beta and leverage and a variety of other factors. So every company has a different implied volatility. And so... This is how a lot of the professional also options traders make their money. It's because volatility tends, unlike delta a stock price, tends to be mean reverting. Uh, it's, it's very rare for volatility to stay consistently high for a long period of time. Historically, it reverts back down to what is like the, it's safe to come out in the water levels for investors, which historically is somewhere between VIX 10 to VIX 15 ish. Uh, and so, there, the historical average for vol is VIX at a 16 because the tails are much wider. VIX vol can go as high as over, as over 100. Like the, the record is 85 during the COVID crisis, whereas the record low is in the six handle. So, like, there's a, there's a floor of volatility, which is something doesn't move at all, that'd be zero. And, but the ceiling is 100% plus moves a day. Like in stocks such as Tesla, that has crazy high volatility because of a lot of the, the motions around that name and a lot of the controversy surrounding it. But the point here is that you've been, that's how like volatility is the way that if you want to just bet on whether you think that certain catalyst is going to come out of the way and ball is going to go down or that the fear and greed of human emotion is often dictated through vol. So if you think fear is going to go down, you sell vol or up, you buy it, etc. That's just a kind of a summary of ball. And then the VAMA, which I mentioned, is the volatility of volatility. If you want to know more about the volatility of volatility, I did a whole other video about that, which I'll have in the end screen that you guys can watch. So I'm not going to get too much into it here but it's usually often a leading indicator for whatever future volatility regime there is. And so the next thing we're gonna talk about is Rho, 
well, even though its Greek symbol is kind of like a capital P, it's the change in price with interest rates. Basically, and if there is a there's a cost to capital, and so therefore, at higher interest rates, the price of a put tends to go down, and the price of a call goes up because you don't have to hold that cash. I mean, I'm not really an expert in row. It's, it's one of the, especially with interest rates as low as they are, it doesn't have as big of an impact as some of the other Greeks. And then the last one I'm going to talk about, I call it phi, but it's basically a fair value for options after fundamental considerations. This is a proprietary indicator, so I'm not going to go into exactly how I derive this, but it's essentially how, at least with my trading, and if you want to know more about this, you can look into Davos Platinum Research for my institutional viewers. Is how I calculate what the fair value of an option would be is if a non vol based trader would pay for it. Like, what would is the option cheaper than me just buying this, the underlying and putting a stop on it, a trailing stop or a hard stop? If the answer is yes, and it's cheaper by more than a considerable amount. Even if the implied vol is high from like the perspective of a vol trader, I would still buy that option anyway. Or if it's even if it makes no sense from a standard Black Scholes sense, and it's the other way around too. Like if the vol is cheap statistically, but it's from a fundamental perspective. I it would be too much risk for me to hold a position that big. I may have a stop at a tighter level and therefore I would not want to pay that option. I'd rather just buy the underlying. So that that's kind of what I I just use fee because it's one of the few Greeks that's not really used in option terminology to kind of define this. That's kind of how I figure out from a more fundamental or directional or macro perspective what options may make sense. For more directional traders that do not make sense for volatility traders and vice versa. So that's my summary of my proprietary Greek. Thank you everybody for watching this. If you like this two part series on the Greeks, feel free to write, like this video, subscribe, and uh, join in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions in particular about option markets, option Greeks, or really anything going on in the marketplace. You can either write them in the comment section of this video, or you can email us at askafundmanager at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day, and good luck there out in the markets. The one thing I do have to do as a disclaimer, which I do in the writing of these show notes, but I'm going to start doing them within the videos too now, is that nothing I say in these videos is investment advice. Please contact your investment advisor and do your own research before making any trades. Thanks for watching.